You're tuning in to Feli's Fishbowl, a marketing podcast for the entrepreneur that wants to create a feel-good business model. On this show, you'll be given the permission slip you've been missing to make that change and start building the business you originally dreamed about. Stick around for solo and interview episodes talking all things content creation and marketing. Sound good to you? Let's dive in. Hello, 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 my fellow fish, and welcome back to another week of Feli's Fishbowl. This week, I am talking all about should marketing and how should marketing does not help anyone. This is not beneficial to any business owner, small business owner, entrepreneur, CEO, whatever it is that you call yourself, you need to stop should marketing. So what is should marketing? You know me, we get straight into these episodes. I do not beat around the bush. Oh, before I get into it, (laughs) um, I do want to give a little disclaimer. I lost my headphones. There's a new pair coming from Amazon. So for the time being, I'm recording directly into my phone app on Anchor, and hopefully the audio is okay for everyone. Um, And I should have headphones again very shortly. Back to the episode. So what is should marketing? Should marketing is exactly what it sounds like. It is when you are marketing from a place of should. When you are showing up on Instagram or you're posting or you're creating because you think you should. Not because you want to, not because you created a strategy that works for you and is aligned with your style, but because you saw a guru say this is how many times you should post a week or you watched a YouTube video and they said, this is the platform everybody should be on. So that's what should marketing is, and it's something that a lot of us can easily fall into the habit of doing. And it's something that even though you're aware of what it is, you may bo- you may fall back into the pattern at different points in your business, depending on how lit up you are and how aligned you are with your current marketing strategy. So. The ways to recognize if you are should marketing is if there's just this unaligned lack of love going into the content that you're creating or the platforms that you're showing up on, you're probably should marketing. So I notice it a lot myself when it comes to Instagram that I will be creating content for the sake of creating content because I know I should be posting to Instagram, but all I want to do is write emails. And so when that happens, you need to reevaluate. Like, what is it about the platform or about the content you're creating that's not lighting you up? Are you not talking about the things that you actually want to because you think they won't perform? Or are you just fed up with the platform you're on and it's not serving you anymore? It could be possible that you should be looking at a whole new marketing strategy in terms of maybe you want to start a blog and start utilizing Pinterest, or maybe you want to start a podcast and have that evergreen content going for you. Same thing for YouTube. Maybe you're tired of the short form, constant need that TikTok and Instagram put on you and Facebook when it comes to social media marketing. But again, it could also be that maybe you just aren't aligned with the offer you're selling or you're not or you can't get yourself behind the messaging you have. There's a few different reasons behind why you could be showing up from a place of should. And it's really going to be about identifying that within yourself, maybe journaling, meditating, self-coaching on the question of why aren't I aligned with my marketing? And I do want to highlight the reason why should marketing is so damaging is because your energy is not behind it. And when your energy isn't behind your content or behind the marketing material that you're putting out, then your intention isn't being met, your audience isn't being activated, it's not going to yield the results you want, aka signing clients, making money, building awareness, and it's going to leave you feeling frustrated. Because you are still putting in work, it's just not the work that you need to be putting in. If you're in a place of should marketing, you need to be putting in the you need to be putting in the work of where is my marketing going wrong? Why am I not aligned with my marketing? More so than creating more. 
There's a time and a place to create more and there's a time and a place to step back and evaluate. So if you want to move away, if you know that you are in the should marketing zone right now, if you know that the content that you're creating and putting out is not from a place of love and passion, but from a place of I should be doing this or they told me to do this and this is what I'm going to do. My first my first piece of advice is to take a break. Whether that is one week or 30 days, it's up to you. It depends on how burnt out, how unaligned you are, like how deep into this should marketing have you put yourself? Have how deep into should marketing have you gone? How long have you been forcing yourself to show up in a way that doesn't feel good and doesn't align with your business? And that's where it's like, is it actually just the platform? Is it just the messaging? Or is it the offer? Or is it the ideal client that you're trying to speak to? It can go deeper and deeper as to why your marketing isn't aligning with you right now. And that's where you're going to evaluate on how long you need to take a break. The second thing I want you to do if you're trying to escape the should marketing cycle is to try something new. And this isn't to be overlapped with taking a break. I want you to take an honest break. Maybe you're going to take a week break from creating anything new and then you're going to try something new instead of going back to Instagram and give yourself 30 days to try that new thing. I know in 2021, I took a 30 day break from consuming So for 30 days, I didn't read any newsletters. I didn't scroll on Instagram. I didn't, um, I didn't listen to podcasts, only music. And it was really good because sometimes we need to get back to that place of hearing our own voice. It's possible that either you've worked with a coach for so long, or you have this routine of listening to podcasts every podcast episode every day that you lose track of your thought leadership within yourself because you're consuming so much that you're now regurgitating everything you consume and not actually identifying what are your thoughts and what are your beliefs. So when it comes to trying something new, it could be something like, I want to start posting reels and I'm going to do 30 days of reels, like not necessarily deleting Instagram and try something new, but it could also be, I'm going to start a YouTube channel and for 30 days, I'm going to take messy action and do everything that I can to get this out there. That's what I did with this podcast. I was just like, okay, here's my deadline, go. And you figure it out as you go and you learn what you like and you learn what you don't like. And in that process, I changed how I showed up on Instagram because I got reignited to share my messaging in a new form. I started making way more carousels and I made a folder in my email. I made a folder in my inbox of emails to be repurposed and they're all my emails that landed my inbox that I then put into repurpose that I then repurpose when I'm in the mood and when I have the time into carousel posts. So maybe trying something new will get you on the path of creating a new strategy that actually works for you. Like maybe it's not the platform, but I do want you to take a break, step away from whatever it is that you're doing every day and is driving your head in and then try this new thing, whatever it is, the thing you always wanted to try or something you've been scared to try. There's so many different ways you can market. You could go on a podcast tour and just pitch a bunch of podcasts to get your message out there. You could do guest blog posting. You could do guest email newsletters or newsletter swaps, freebie swaps, lead magnet swaps, whatever you want to call that. You could do joint lives or just start going live in other people's groups, doing guest trainings. Like There's so many things The main thing I want you to look at when you're trying something new is putting yourself outside of your comfort zone. Because when you're outside your comfort zone, you're going to be able to recognize your thoughts more because you're going to be thinking a lot about what you're doing. So this is a short and sweet one. I just wanted to get it out there because I've got some exciting things coming in the month of January for all of you that are interested in marketing or especially those of you that dread marketing. If you are someone who does not love marketing right now, you really want to be watching this space. Follow me on Instagram at Felly Day. Um, If you love this episode, make sure you tag at Felly's Fishbowl. 
and at Valley Day, and I will be sure to reshare it. But you'll want to be following me because I've got a free, exciting masterclass coming. It will be announced as of Saturday, so two days after this is out. Uh, Saturday is the 14th, if I'm right. Um, yes, Saturday is the 14th. So keep your eyes peeled for Saturday, January 14th to see what the masterclass that's coming is all about. Um, if you aren't an Instagram person, that's not a problem. Join my email list. You can get there by downloading the lead magnet that I will put in the show notes. It is 10 alternative ways to market your business. Perfect for those of you who are going to try something new because I give you a list of 10 different things you can do to market your business that aren't just post on Instagram. And no, this isn't like those 10 ways to sign a client and it's like message your friends, ask word of mouth, post in a local group. Like these are real actual marketing methods that you can do and use and start implementing right away. So that will be linked in the show notes. My Instagrams are linked in the show notes. And if you liked this episode, please don't forget to rate, review, subscribe, whatever it is that your listening platform tells you to do. And I will be back next week with another episode of Feli's Fishbowl.